In this short video, we'll look at uh, developing the equations of motion of a, a two-string mass uh, linear mass system. Um, so you have mass m1 connected to the wall through a spring k of spring constant k connected to the right wall through a damper of spring constant b1, and then there is damping between m1 and m2. On m2, there is a force f. Now here is our uh, inertial coordinate system. Everything will be written with respect to this coordinate system. You always need to have an inertial coordinate system to write your uh, equations of motion. Now let's look at uh, this damping here. This damping can be thought of as a damper like this between the two bodies like so. Uh, so first you establish directional motion. We assume that uh, before I establish directional motion we have to make sure when we establish directions of motion that uh, any spring or damper between the two two bodies has to be in extension. That's just a configuration that we assume to correctly derive the uh, equations of motion. Otherwise, it will just result in confusion. You might not get the equations of motions right. This is a procedure that we est established. So I'm assuming that x1 ma mass m1 moves in the positive x direction. So x1, x1 double dot and x1 double x1 x1 dot and x1 double dot are in positive x direction now for this to be in extension this end has to move faster than this end i.e the velocity of this end has to be greater than the velocity of this end end so i'm also assuming that m2 moves in the positive x direction with x2 x2 double dot and x2 dot being in the positive uh, x direction um, so for this end to move faster than this end, I need to have the configuration with x1 dot greater than x2 dot. The next step is to establish force magnitudes in springs and dampers. Um, so if you look at uh, this, this spring here, this end is stationary, this moves by x1, therefore the magnitude of the force in this spring is k times x1. Note that x1 is positive because it's x, this is moving the positive x direction. Uh, similarly, the force in the damper B1 is nothing but V1 times X1 dot uh, because this end moves in the positive uh, X direction in with the velocity X1 dot and this end is stationary. Now for this damper here, this one moves uh, in the positive X direction in X1 dot with speed X1 dot and this moves, this end moves in the positive x direction with velocity x2 dot. The relative velocity between the ends is x1 dot minus x2 dot. Therefore, the force in the damper, the magnitude, is b2 times x1 dot minus x2 dot. Next thing we do is uh, do the free body diagrams. So these are all the connections for m1. We know that if uh, uh, now, if this moves forward with x1 dot, this end is fixed. Now, this uh, damper gets compressed, so its natural tendency is to op oppose the motion. So, this damper will exert a force in the negative x direction on m1. Uh, if you look at the spring, this end is fixed, this end is moving forward, therefore, the spring is in extension, and the natural tendency of the spring is to pull inward. So, this spring exerts a force in the negative x direction on m1. Same thing here, if you notice this damper, as we uh, uh, chose the configuration, this damper is in extension, the natural tendency of the damper is to come back to its original position, therefore it will exert a force in the negative x direction on m1. And uh, now we write equations of motion. So m1 x1 double dot, now x1 double dot is positive because it is moving in the positive x direction, it is sum of all forces in the x direction. And what are the forces? I have uh, FB1 in the negative x direction, FK in the negative x direction, and FB2 in the negative x direction. I put in all the um, magnitudes of those, like so. And so, you know, FB1 is B1 times x1 dot, magnitude FK is K times x1 dot, and FB2 is B2 times x1 dot minus x2 dot. Bring everything to one side, you get M1 x1 double dot plus B1 plus B2 times x1 dot plus K x1 dot x1 minus b2 x2 dot equal to 0. Now if you notice here the coefficients of uh, x1 dot, x1 dot, x1 double dot and x1 are all the same. So in this case they are all positive and the coefficient of x2 dot is negative. Uh, that uh, tells you that's a small check uh, to see if your uh, equations are right. If you screw up with the free body diagrams uh, you might get a negative sign in one of the uh, coefficients. For example, if you get b1 minus b2 times x1 dot, then you have done something wrong. Uh, 
Now we go to the second mass and the things that are connected to the second mass are this damper and then this, of course there's this force. Now as you recall, once again we draw the field body diagram, as you recall this damper is in extension so the natural tendency of the damper is to pull inward so you know, on this mass the damper will be pulling in the positive uh, x direction. And those are the only forces on this uh, M2. So we can write the equations of motion like so. M2 x2 double dot. Once again, x2 double dot is positive because M2 is moving the positive x direction. Is equal to this M2 x2 double dot is equal to sum of all forces F. And what are the forces here? Now uh, F F is positive because point, pointing in the positive x direction. And this force damper force is also positive because it's pointing in the positive x direction. And we put in all the magnitudes like so. And then we bring everything to one side, you get m2 x2 double dot plus b2 x2 dot minus b2 x1 dot equal to f. Once again, you see that the coefficient of coefficients of x2 double dot and x2 dot are both uh, positive. And so that's the end of this uh, example.